Constraints 4.2 Protein Secondary Structure The term secondary structure refers to any chosen segment of a polypeptide chain and describes the local spatial arrangement of its main chain atoms, without regard to the positioning of its side chains or its relationship to other segments. A regular secondary structure occurs when each dihedral angle, phi and psi, remains the same or nearly the same throughout the segment. There are a few types of secondary structure that are particularly stable and occur widely in proteins. The most prominent are the alpha helix and beta conformations, another common type is the beta turn. Where a regular pattern is not found, the secondary structure is sometimes referred to as undefined or as a random coil. This last designation, however, does not properly describe the structure of these segments. The path of most of the polypeptide backbone in a typical protein is not random, rather, it is unchanging and highly specific to the structure and function of that particular protein. Our discussion here focuses on the regular structures that are most common. The alpha helix is a common protein secondary structure. Pauling and Corey were aware of the importance of hydrogen bonds in orienting polar chemical groups, such as the C equals O and NH groups of the peptide bond. They also had the experimental results of William Astbury, who in the 1930s had conducted pioneering X-ray studies of proteins. Astbury demonstrated that the protein that makes up hair and porcupine quills, the fibrous protein alpha-keratin, has a regular structure that repeats every 5.15 to 5.2a. The angstrom, A, named after the physicist Anders J. Angstrom, is equal to 0.1 nanometers. Although not an SI unit, it is used universally by structural biologists to describe atomic distances it is approximately the length of a typical CH bond. With this information and their data on the peptide bond, and with the help of precisely constructed models, Pauling and Corey set out to determine the likely conformations of protein molecules. Figure 4 to 4 models. The first breakthrough came in 1948. Pauling was a visiting lecturer at Oxford University, became ill, and retired to his apartment for several days of rest. Bored with the reading available, Pauling grabbed some paper and pencils to work out a plausible stable structure that could be taken up by a polypeptide chain. The model he developed, and later confirmed in work with Corey and co worker Herman Branson, was the simplest arrangement the polypeptide chain can assume that maximizes the use of internal hydrogen bonding. It is a helical structure and Pauling and Corey called it the alpha helix, fig, 4 to 4. In this structure, the polypeptide backbone is tightly wound around an imaginary axis drawn longitudinally through the middle of the helix, and the R groups of the amino acid residues protrude outward from the helical backbone. The repeating unit is a single turn of the helix, which extends about 5.4a along the long axis, slightly greater than the periodicity. Astbury observed on X-ray analysis of hair keratin. The backbone atoms of the amino acid residues in the prototypical alpha helix have a characteristic set of dihedral angles that define the alpha helix conformation, table 4 to 1, and each helical turn includes 3.6 amino acid residues. The alpha helical segments in proteins often deviate slightly from these dihedral angles, and they even vary somewhat within a single, continuous segment so as to produce subtle bends or kinks in the helical axis. Pauling and Corey considered both right and left handed variants of the alpha helix. The subsequent elucidation of the three dimensional structure of myoglobin and other proteins showed that the right handed alpha helix is the common form, box 4 to 1. Extended left-handed alpha helices are theoretically less stable and have not been observed in proteins. The alpha helix proved to be the predominant structure in alpha keratins. More generally, about one-fourth of all amino acid residues in proteins are found in alpha helices, the exact fraction varying greatly from one protein to another. Table 4 to 1 idealized 5. Common secondary proteins. Structure Phi Psi Alpha Note, in real protein, why does the alpha helix form more readily than many other possible conformations? The answer lies, in part, in its optimal use of internal hydrogen helical bonds. 
The structure is stabilized by a hydrogen bond between the hydrogen atom attached to the electronegative nitrogen atom of a peptide linkage and the electronegative carbonyl-oxygen atom of the fourth amino acid on the amino terminal side of that peptide bond, Fig. 4-4a. Within the alpha helix, every peptide bond, except those close to each end of the helix, participates in such hydrogen bonding. Each successive turn of the alpha helix is held to adjacent turns by three to four hydrogen bonds, conferring significant stability on the overall structure. At the ends of an alpha helical segment, there are always three or four amide carbonyl or amino groups that cannot participate in this helical pattern of hydrogen bonding. These may be exposed to the surrounding solvent, where they hydrogen bond with water, or other parts of the protein may cap the helix to provide the needed hydrogen. Bonding partners. Further experiments have shown that an alpha helix can form in polypeptides consisting of either L or D amino acids. However, all residues must be of one stereoisomeric series. A D amino acid will disrupt a regular structure consisting of L amino acids, and vice versa. The most stable form of an alpha helix consisting of D amino acids is left handed. Worked example and protein. What is the Solution. Amino acid sequence affects stability of the alpha helix. Not all polypeptides can form a stable alpha helix. Each amino acid residue in a polypeptide has an intrinsic propensity to form an alpha helix, table 4 to 2, reflecting the properties of the R group and how they affect the capacity of the adjoining main chain atoms to take up the characteristic phi and psi angles. Alanine shows the greatest tendency to form alpha helices in most experimental model systems. Box 4 to 1, the left. There is a simple table 4 to, table 4 to 2 propensity to take up an alpha helix. Conformation. Amino acid. Sources. The position of an amino acid residue relative to its neighbors is also important. Interactions between amino acid side chains can stabilize or destabilize the alpha helical structure. For example, if a polypeptide chain has a long block of blue residues, this segment of the chain will not form an alpha helix at pH 7.0. The negatively charged carboxyl groups of adjacent blue residues repel each other so strongly that they prevent formation of the alpha helix. For the same reason, if there are many adjacent lists and or arg residues with positively charged or groups at pH 7.0, they also repel each other and prevent formation of the alpha helix. The bulk and shape of ASN, SER, THR, and SIS residues can also destabilize an alpha helix if they are close together in the chain. The twist of an alpha helix ensures that critical interactions occur between an amino acid side chain and the side chain 3, and sometimes 4, residues away on either side of it. This is made clear when the alpha helix is depicted as a helical wheel, fig. 4-4D. Positively charged amino acids are often found. Three residues away from negatively charged amino acids, permitting the formation of an ion pair. Two aromatic amino acid residues are often similarly spaced, resulting in a juxtaposition stabilized by the hydrophobic effect. A constraint on the formation of the alpha helix is the presence of pro or GLY residues, which have the least proclivity to form alpha helices. In proline, the nitrogen atom is part of a rigid ring, C fig, 4 to 8, and rotation about the NC alpha bond is not possible. Thus, a pro residue introduces a destabilizing kink in an alpha helix. In addition, the nitrogen atom of a pro residue in a peptide linkage has no substituent hydrogen to participate in hydrogen bonds with other residues. For these reasons, proline is only rarely found in an alpha helix. Glycine occurs infrequently in alpha helices for a different reason. It has more conformational flexibility than the other amino acid residues. Polymers of glycine tend to take up coiled structures quite different from an alpha helix. A final factor affecting the stability of an alpha helix is the identity of the amino acid residues near the ends of the alpha helical segment of the polypeptide. A small electric dipole exists in each peptide bond, Fig. 4-2A. These dipoles are aligned through the hydrogen bonds of the helix, 
resulting in a net dipole along the helical axis that increases with helix length, fig, 4 to 5. The partial positive and negative charges of the helix dipole reside on the peptide amino and carbonyl groups near the amino terminal and carboxyl terminal ends, respectively. For this reason, negatively charged amino acids are often found near the amino terminus of the helical segment, where they have a stabilizing interaction with the positive charge of the helix dipole, a positively charged amino acid at the amino terminal end is destabilizing. The opposite is true at the carboxyl terminal end of the helical segment. In summary, five types of constraints affect the stability of an alpha helix. 1. The intrinsic propensity of an amino acid residue to form an alpha helix. 2. The interactions between our groups, particularly those spaced 3 or 4 residues apart. 3. The bulkiness of adjacent R groups. 4. The occurrence of pro and GLY residues. And 5. Interactions between amino acid residues at the ends of the helical segment and the electric dipole inherent to the alpha helix. The tendency of a given segment of a polypeptide chain to form an alpha helix therefore depends on the identity and sequence of amino acid residues within the segment. Figure 4 to 5 Helix Dipole The electric dipole of a peptide 2A is bonds carbonyl respective peptide bonds near each end of the beta conformation organizes polypeptide chains into sheets. In 1951, Pauling and Corey predicted a second type of repetitive structure, the beta conformation. This is a more extended conformation of polypeptide chains, and its structure is again defined by backbone atoms arranged according to a characteristic set of dihedral angles, table 4 to 1. In the beta conformation, the backbone of the polypeptide chain is extended into a zigzag rather than helical structure, fig, 4 to 6. The arrangement of several segments side by side, all of which are in the beta conformation, is called a beta sheet. The zigzag structure of the individual polypeptide segments gives rise to a pleated appearance of the overall sheet. Hydrogen bonds form between adjacent segments of polypeptide chain within the sheet. The individual segments that form a beta sheet are usually nearby on the polypeptide chain, but can also be quite distant from each other in the linear sequence of the polypeptide, they may even be in different polypeptide chains. The R groups of adjacent amino acids protrude from the zigzag structure in opposite directions, creating the alternating pattern seen in the side view in figure 4 to 6. Figure 4 to B, C, top Emphasized the adjacent polypeptide chains in a beta sheet can be either parallel or antiparallel, having the same or opposite amino to carboxyl orientations, respectively. The structures are somewhat similar, although the repeat period is shorter for the parallel conformation, 6.5a, versus 7a for antiparallel, and the hydrogen bonding patterns are different. The interstrand hydrogen bonds are essentially in line, see fig, 2 to 5 in the antiparallel beta sheet, whereas they are distorted or not in line for the parallel variant. The idealized structures exhibit the bond angles given in table 4 to 1, these values vary somewhat in real proteins, resulting in structural variation, as seen above for alpha helices. Beta turns are common in proteins. In globular proteins, which have a compact folded structure, some amino acid residues are in turns or loops where the polypeptide chain reverses direction, fig, 4 to 7. These are the connecting elements that link successive runs of alpha helix or beta conformation. Particularly common are beta turns that connect the ends of two adjacent segments of an antiparallel beta sheet. The structure is a 180 degrees turn involving four amino acid residues, with the carbonyl oxygen of the first residue forming a hydrogen bond with the amino group hydrogen of the fourth. The peptide groups of the central two residues do not participate in any inter-residue hydrogen bonding. Several types of beta turns have been described, each defined by the phi and psi angles of the bonds that link the four amino acid residues that make up the particular turn, table 4 to 1. GLY and PRO residues often occur in beta turns, the former because it is small and flexible the 
latter because peptide bonds involving the imino nitrogen of proline readily. Assume the cis configuration, fig, 4 to 8, a form that is particularly amenable to a tight turn. The two types of beta turns shown in figure 4 to 7 are the most common. Beta turns are often found near the surface of a protein, where the peptide groups of the central two amino acid residues in the turn can hydrogen bond with water. Considerably less common is the gamma turn, a three residue turn with a hydrogen bond between the first and third residues. Common secondary structures have characteristic dihedral angles. The alpha helix and the beta conformation are the major repetitive secondary structures in a wide variety of proteins, although other repetitive structures exist in some specialized proteins, an example is collagen, see fig, 4 to 13. Every type of secondary structure can be completely described by the dihedral angles phi and psi associated with each residue. As shown by a Ramachandran plot, the dihedral angles that define the alpha helix and the beta conformation fall within a relatively restricted range of sterically allowed structures, fig, 4-9a. Most values of phi and psi taken from known protein structures fall into the expected regions, with high concentrations near the alpha helix and beta conformation values, as predicted, fig, 4-9b. The only amino acid residue often found in a conformation outside these regions is glycine. Because its side chain is small, a GLY residue can take part in many conformations that are sterically forbidden for other amino acids. Figure 4 to common in the turn type 2 figure 4 figure 4 to 9 theoretic figure 4 to common secondary structures can be assessed by circular dichroism any form of structural asymmetry in a molecule gives rise to differences in absorption of left-handed versus right-handed circularly polarized light measurement of this difference is called circular dichroism cd spectroscopy an ordered structure, such as a folded protein, gives rise to an absorption spectrum that can have peaks or regions with both positive and negative values. For proteins, spectra are obtained in the far UV region, 190 to 250 nanometers. The light-absorbing entity, or chromophore, in this region is the peptide bond. A signal is obtained when the peptide bond is in a folded environment. The difference in molar extinction coefficients, see box 3 to 1, for left and right-handed, circularly polarized light, delta epsilon, is plotted as a function of wavelength. The alpha helix and beta conformations have characteristic CD spectra, fig, 4 to 10. Using CD spectra, biochemists can determine whether proteins are properly folded, estimate the fraction of the protein that is folded in either of the common secondary structures and monitor transitions between the folded and unfolded states. Summary 4.2 Protein Secondary Structure Secondary structure is the local spatial arrangement of the main chain atoms in a selected segment of a polypeptide chain. The most common regular secondary structures are the alpha helix, the beta conformation, and beta turns. The secondary structure of a polypeptide segment can be completely defined if the phi and psi angles are known for all amino acid residues in that segment. Circular dichroism spectroscopy is a method for assessing common secondary structure and monitoring folding in proteins. 